It's Ivy League Championship Sunday, and the best two teams in the Ancient Eight are ready to go at it. The Princeton University Tigers. Six on the Bulldogs, the number two seed. 16 to six, the triumph over number three Cornell. Their first ever Ivy League tournament game. They came up swimmingly. Princeton, Yale, one versus two for the Ivy League title, and it's coming up in just moments here on ESPN+. Plus. Good afternoon, everyone. Happy Mother's Day to all the moms out there, especially my partner, one of the all-time Princeton greats, Krista Samaras. I'm Jeff O'Connor. Natalie Calabat will be on with us in just a little bit. Krista, this is a fascinating matchup. Yale, if you talk to people in February, they were not expected to be in this game. However, as the 2022 season went along, they have left no doubt they deserve to be in this game. And for Princeton, really, it's business as usual. It's Chris Taylor's final season as head coach. They went 7-0 and in the Ivies. They're here in the championship game, too. I am so excited for this game. This is as big as it gets, obviously, for the Ivy League championship. But this two teams, both of them are here and ready to play. You cannot discount Yale at all. They brought it to Princeton last weekend. And without the as many emotions as there were last weekend with Chris Taylor's final game uh, and celebration day, they are here and ready to go. Let's talk about the players to watch in today's contest. And there's a bevy of them on both sides. Olivia Markert only had one goal in the game against Princeton, but she put in a tremendous performance on Friday against Cornell. She's incredibly slippery and an incredible leader for this very young squad. She gets them moving. She gets them going. She does her part no matter whether or not she's actually scoring the goals. But today I expect a big day given how well she played on Friday night. On the other side for the Princeton University Tigers, Kyla Sears, a career best nine points on Friday against Harvard. A few spectacular highlight plays, career-breaking moments, just doing what she does. She's doing what she does, and she'll do that again today. Again, a great leader for a young squad out there. Uh, there are so many great threats on the on the Princeton attack, but she is the biggest of them all of all time. Claire Boone, the junior, will get the nod and goal today for Yale. She is certainly going to play a big role today, a 386 save percentage. On the other side for the Princeton University Tigers, Sam Fish, the goalie of the year in the Ivy League, sporting a 461 save percentage. Those are the keepers today. Let's go down to the third member of our broadcast crew, Natalie Calvin. Natalie? Guys, and talking to both coaches, Yale coach Erica Bamford and Princeton coach Chris Saylor, both said the draws are going to be the name of the game today. Chris Saylor telling me they got to win those 50-50 balls. As for the Yale coach, Erica Bamford, she said she does have a lot of confidence in Skylar Carasquillo and what she can do. Both teams will be playing really hard for that championship this afternoon. And we are ready to go here in Princeton, New Jersey. Sherrod Field, class of 1952 stadium. The number one Princeton University Tigers, the number two Yale University Bulldogs. Princeton was 7-0 and in the Ivy in 2022. Yale was 6-1. and We're underway here in the Ivy League Championship as the first ball is batted around and the opening possession will go the way of the Yale Bulldogs. Draws are going to be huge today, and Yale comes up with this, though there was a little scuffle in there. Sky Carasquillo is so excellent uh, at the draw. There are so many first-team All-Ivy Leaguers offensively for Yale. You see a few of them on the field. Fallon Vaughn, one of them. Taylor Lane had a strong year. We mentioned Carasquillo. We'll talk more about her in the draw as we go along. This one's taken on here by Caroline Burt. Tossed downstairs as a steady unit for Yale defensively as well. Marge Donovan locked up, working on Olivia Marker. Tough angle, they score, and Yale breaks the ice early. 43 seconds in, one nothing Bulldogs. Yeah, we see a huge mark up here. So we see that Marge Donovan has already got it out for Olivia Marker, uh, but she gets a little bit inside here and allows an incredible shot. It's a little off angle, but that shot is a killer. It's a great way for Olivia Marker to lead her team. She did only have one goal in the last match against Princeton just over a week ago, so this is a huge Huge goal for the senior. 45th of the season. She was very good against Cornell the other night. She had three goals, led the team in shots with 10. Nobody else had more than six with five of them on goal. So the draws, as we mentioned, these two teams met up for the outright Ivy League regular season title back on April 30th, just over a week ago. Both teams came in 6-0, and out, and Yale was excellent in the draw circles. The Tigers are going to get one of their own here. The number was 25 to 9. Now the Tigers won 17-14. They shot amazingly from the field and Sam Fish did a wonderful job in goals. We take a look at the offense for the Tigers. Great talk as Kate Mullum each had excellent years. Carrie Bonanno back in the lineup as well. 
And Mackenzie Blake had a standout first year as well, and this defensive unit has been together most of it seemingly forever. The Tigers get their first offensive possession. You can see Kyla's being face guarded by incredible freshman Mary Megan Wright. Uh, so they're going to try to take her out of this completely. Definitely one of the tips I would have provided. Um, Yale has to figure out a way to get Kyla out of this offense. Here's Mackenzie Blake driving through and she'll score. And it is the thing about Princeton. She may be young, she may be a freshman, but at this point in the season, this kid understands how to get that ball and put it in the back of the net. She's shifty, she's strong, she gets that shoulder ducked down and just nails it with a left-handed shot past Claire Boone. This is the way you show up in an Ivy League championship game, first by Yale and now by Princeton. Mackenzie Blake, her 32nd of the year. And Krista, why don't we talk about some of the keys to today's contest? There's there's a lot of them. The draw we started out with a little bit, there, there's so much to get into. Today. Yeah, for Princeton, they've got to compete on the draw. Sky Carasquillo is incredible. She leads the Ivy League. Draw uh, Yale is insane at the draw, so they've got to compete there. Um, Princeton's got to manage Yale's offensive threat, starting with Olivia Marker. They did a great job the last, uh, last uh, game, but they really need to watch out for a number of other scores. For Yale, they've really got to figure out what to do with Kyla Sears. Um, and if they figure out what to do with Kyla Sears, they're going to have to mark up on Mackenzie Blake and all the other Princeton threats along with them. All right, both teams an offensive set, both teams a goal. Yale, on the third draw control, will take that one, and they'll get their second set. This ball thrown away, though. Livia Pugh in a race to it right up against the sideline, tried to walk it out of bounds. And who's it going to be? It is going to be Princeton ball. Pugh's a specialist at this. Listen, she's got on a couple of times where their ball's coming out of bounds, and she just boxes out the other player knowing that it will be their possession. So it's a great heads-up play by Pugh. So many departments will matter in a do-or-die game, if you will. For the Princeton University Tigers, if they win today, of course, obviously they make the NCAA tournament. They seem a pretty good bet if they do They will qualify automatically for the NCAA tournament, but it does not seem like they are a lock to get in if they end up falling today. They're right on the bubble. Yeah, Yale, Yale's playing for everything. This is their first time here. Uh, and and it, they're just b built by a young team so far. Some good senior leadership, but did not expect to be playing for this championship. And now fighting for it tooth and nail. They're going to have to fight for the remainder of this game. It's going to be tight. So off the turnover, Tigers working through this. They've had a few shot attempts here, and they've been able to retain the ball. They're about halfway through this timer. And that actually hit the post, they're saying on that last shot by Ellie Miller. Miller's got it again, and a shot popped over the top of the cage. Great play. It looks like she released that a little quietly out of the stick there. She's going to have to drill that in. Here's Kyla Sears, one on one. Soft double comes, plays it in tight, bouncing ball. There looked like a foul on the interior there. Kyla's getting really well marked by first year from Yale, Mary Megan Wright. She's so powerful. We see a lot of her power in a great transition. Uh, clearing that ball safely out of the defensive end. She's got a big task today with marking Kyla. Here's Grace Takis, who's been one of the excellent Tigers players in the offensive end of the field this year. And she'll score that one short side right inside the post Tigers. First lead of the day, 2-1 Princeton. You, you know how crazy it is to have somebody with locomotive power coming at you. Grace is able to get in so quickly. She does this really great shifty move with her shoulders, and it's really hard for a goalie to read that. Realistically, she's just putting it right, uh, right by the shoulder of Claire Boone there, but with such power, and I like to say, such grace, Takis. <laughs> power and grace, 40th of the year for Takis, and the Tigers can have converted on both their possessions here in the early going they had 17 free position shots on friday against harvard just a volume of shots all over the field leading to a 13 goal output so at this draw i mean as they're setting it up you know you can see coaches on the sidelines coaching to the draw coaching to positioning coaching to to, to get the players back out and ready but this draw is so important the reason why sky is so good she's got a deep well of tactics and techniques she uses but she also has incredible height and use of your body see you can see that here she's blocking everybody out and being able to get that out of the air princeton has to disrupt that in order to be able to fight for a 50 50 ball 
So they've taken three of the first four draws have Yale. It was Taylor Lane, though, who turned the ball over, and that allowed the Tigers to possess for that second goal. They're going to pop this one into the midfield. What a pick. Mackenzie Blake will take it the other way. Doesn't have numbers. The wrist strength that it requires to do that uh, is insane. Um, she has got such a good hold on the ball. I kind of wanted her to go for it. It would have been... The crowd would have risen all the way to their feet on that one. This both sides, excellent crowds on both sides. This should be a fascinating matchup uh, all over the stadium, field, everything. Blake will get a little bit of a head start here in a tight area. Grace Takas. There's a lane here for Samantha DeVito. That shot wouldn't go to the Tigers. Keep it, they will. Looks like Ellie Miller had a chance to make the play on that. Ended up sliding all the way to the end line. Tough pass, Shannon Berry, she's on the field here. It's Kate Mullum, had a strong junior year, and that shot with the offhand, bit wide of the cage, it'll stay with Princeton. Princeton really showing some new looks in here, a lot of isolation plays to get a, a driver open. Kate Mullum is one of the best to do it from the three spot. Wow, a turnover here. I'm sure if Miller was near the crease, whatever the case, it, a turnover there, so turnovers here, a few of them the early going. It really wasn't much of a factor in the last time these two teams met up. 13 to 12, which pretty much lines up with both teams' season numbers. But, but Yale trying to go field twice, turned it over. They're gonna try here, get the clear. Tough handle there for Caroline Burt. She'll take it across, and now Yale's got a chance to knock this one up after a few turnovers. And they'll work behind the goal. A great defense there by Shannon Berry. Just, just scooting Caroline Burt off her line, which is exactly what the Tigers want to continue to do. We see an early slide there. Wow, a huge fish by Sam, a huge fish, a huge save by Sam Fish. That was an incredible save. If we were doubting whether or not she was ready to play today, focus, standing tall, Fish in the crease with a huge first save. Fish was a monster last Saturday. 17 stops on 31 shots on goal. You see 14 goals allowed, you think, boy, that's a big number. Not when you stop 17 of them. She was terrific and really one of the main reasons, if not the main reason, the Tigers clinched the outright Ivy League title as they'll set up on offense here, still up by a goal. And actually huge, those 17 saves, because Yale is so dynamic, they shoot in every way possible. So those saves were made from diverse plays being thrown at her. Uh, definitely her best game of the season and needed on that day. And Sam Fish moves into a tie with Ellie DeGarmo on the all-time Princeton saves list, one of the great keepers in recent Princeton memory. As a drive by Mullum, no angle wide that she liked. Pretty deep in the timer here. Mullum one-on-one. -on -one. That shot fizzled wide. What an alert play. Mackenzie Blake on the doorstep. Perfect timing. 3-1 Princeton. Princeton is setting up Mullen for drives from the top as they should. That's a three-spot drive. They were so effective uh, in the in the game last time, and Mullen's been doing so well. But to be able to have that heads-up play again, I say freshman hot on the crease. Mackenzie Blake just so smoothly putting it in. Tigers have scored the last three after falling behind in the opening 43 seconds. Princeton's playing an interesting offensive lineup in there. You see Miller, you see DeVito, and you see Barry coming in um, to just add some, some, some depth, some freshness to, to the offensive unit, and it's really paying off. Lots of movement of space, creating opportunities for Mullen from the top. Blake had two goals and an assist last time these two squads met up this past Saturday. Last Saturday, there's a draw here. Let's see if the Tigers can slow down that that edge for Yale. And Kara Squillo, a clean win, and she got contacted illegally, so it'll go back to the Bulldogs. They've taken four of the first five here. Maddie, and, and so tactically sound. The Tigers don't have many deficiencies, really, seemingly in any year, but they, in conference play, they are eighth of the eight teams in terms of draw controls per game. They, I think did, a, they, they did a good job on Friday, yeah. but of course Yale's a different beast. Yeah, yeah. They've struggled, and when you're comparing them especially to a team like Yale, uh, it's a deficit they're, they have to make up until they solve that problem. They're always going to be having to possess more smartly. 
That shot whizzes wide, backed up by Panoyer. It is all about the margins in different departments that matter. Tigers have seen a few Yale turnovers. Sam Fish has only seen two shots. She stopped one of them, and they've converted at a high rate. Oh, they've got a two-goal lead. Here's a drive. Everson had an angle for a moment. Pew able to close it down, but a whistle comes. Wow, it's a great matchup over there. You've got slick defensive feeding, feeding footing by, by Pew and a great handle by Everson there. Exactly where she wants to be on this on this hash. She scored two goals against Princeton last Saturday. And she'll like to pull this one out. This is pretty deep in the timer and a near turnover. Olivia Pew's on it. Yeah, looks a little shaky on attack. They've been so firm this year so far. They've definitely been firm against their last competitors, particularly on Friday night. They just look a little shaky in the boots there. Carrie Bonanno just driving down Broadway and she'll score. The whistle came before that, but it's gonna count. And no one throws her stick on the ground more fiercely than Kari Bonanno. Uh, kind of like the way she, she comes at that cage, especially in transition. You don't see that many transition goals anymore, so it's beautiful when you do. She just gets such great position, incredible way to fight her way in. She puts it in the back of the net. Princeton ahead, four to one. Walk a mile in our shoes, from the classroom to the locker room. Here, our promise and our passion propel us down paths few dare to travel. We venture forward, energized with every step. We defy convention in defining ourselves, pushing to achieve, strive, and lead at the highest level. With teammates, teachers, coaches, and classmates at our side. Together, we are Tigers. Together, we are Princeton. It appears unlikely the Tigers will be hosting a region come the NCAA tournament. So this seemingly is going to be the last game at 1952 Stadium for Chris Saylor. And what a year for her to go out 7-0 in the Ivies. They're in the Ivy League tournament. The, the great day it was last Saturday. And trying to wrap up one more thing and one more loose end here today. Yeah, I mean, it's a big loose end for sure. There's a lot of game ahead. But she's an incredible person, uh, which is what many of the alumni have been sharing you know, as we as we just revisit all of the, the memories and all the people, but she's also an incredible coach. This team is very well prepared for the last 36 years, um, and she's got a great staff and associate head coach Jen Cook and Karen Maurer, who just, uh, as a unit, they're fun to watch, they're fun to hang out with because they have such a good time. Chris Saylor and her group and players over the year have done very well in this tournament. This is their seventh time in it. They are 5-1 and one in Ivy League Championship Tournament Finals and they've won the last three. We have not had one handed out since May 5th, 2019 with the pandemic and the 2021 canceled season. Somebody's gonna get crowned Ivy League champion today. Another draw for Yale. They're on the run with a bit of numbers. They're gonna get a free position shot here. It's gonna be Sophie Straka. Sophie Straka takes it so hard. I mean, she's great on this hash. Uh, that, um, that If you could look at that play again, the, the Princeton defense shifted so well to slide to numbers there. But Yale's rewarded here with a eight-meter shot. Straka to the net. Fish will shut it down. The rebound's loose. Still wow. batted around. And Yale's on top of it. Big moment for them to get back on top of that. Huge save for Fish. I mean, Straka is so powerful coming in at any angle, but one with the advantage in the right hand up on an eight meter shot, no less, to be coming up with that point blank save. 
Sam Fish has stopped two of three today, and giving the Tigers a boost here in this first quarter. They lead 4-1. They've scored the last four. Taylor Everson, watched by Pugh, and a nice goal there, low downstairs. Good location, and Yale gets a strike back they needed. I mean, I love Everson because she's skill on display. She's so nifty and shifty and fun to watch. Um, she's just really working Pew here, and the slide doesn't come soon enough to get that check from behind, so she just nails it in the cage. Great play by Everson. First year, an impeccable vision on the field. She can see to create plays. In that way, she's like Penoyer, her junior teammate. Uh, but she loves the back of the net, like Olivia Markert, <laughs> her senior leader. So Yale went about nine minutes without a goal there, and makes it 4-2 now. And they have lived for Princeton, and you're going to see Chris, Chris Saylor and her group try and maybe go through some players who maybe can find a an inconsistency and inefficiency that they can take care of. Well, yeah. Sky's getting the advantage for height. Yep. I mean, she's get, she's definitely getting it right to herself. Marge can't get in fast enough, as fast as she is. So maybe Sophie gives a disruption there. It's helpful. And there's the all-time draw control leader in Princeton history. Marge Donovan will pick it up. That sets up the Tigers on offense. And let's talk more about Mackenzie Blake, who's got two goals already. Let's throw it down to Natalie Calvin. Natalie? Guys, the last time the Ivy League crowned a tournament champion in 2019, the most outstanding player was a sophomore named Kyla Sears. Three years later, Sears stands on the edge of history, just two goals away from becoming the first Princeton lacrosse player, male or female, to score 200 goals. To do it in what may be legendary coach Chris Saylor's last home game would be even more fitting. Well said, and... Kyla Sears is going to get, a, get set up right here. The last goal she scored on Friday, of course, made SportsCenter's top 10, the behind-the-back throw, which tied her with Olivia Hop on the all-time program list with 198 goals. She can break it right here. And fired it just over the bar. Tigers were up against the line there, so they're going to have the ball. Yale thought they should have it. Yeah, no, she was uh, out of bounds on that one, so it should be Tiger Ball. Here we go. Mackenzie Blake lurking around the crease again. Good back up there by Kate Mullum. Right in front, Ellie Miller will bounce it home. Oh, this is this feels so good to watch happen. Uh, one, because there's a there's a shot, there's an error play, and you get this great look down low with Ellie Miller coming off the crease. It's absolutely beautiful. Mullum realizes she doesn't have it, finds Miller coming in, just sneaking in there, um, and she, with that skill, puts it low. So good, so good. So after the Yale goal, it only takes the Tigers about a minute to respond. And Ellie Miller, who's been a, a good secondary scorer for the Tigers this year, her 13th of the year, and that restores the three-goal lead. I mean, you have Princeton has five goals here. None of the scorers are Kyla so far. Yep. Uh, it, it It's very promising for the rest of this game. It's very promising for postseason play and incredibly promising for a future Tiger team. Give an assist to Kate Mullum on that goal. She's on the stat sheet today. And the Tigers scored that directly off a of draw control. Marge Donovan picked up that ball and the Tigers scored off that set. Sophie Whiteway able to disrupt there, get some height in there, trying to control it. Whistle goes against Yale. Whiteway did enough and had enough body position. Now she'll try and take it, gets caught from behind, but illegally, so the Tigers will have it. So Tigers pick up the last two draws here and with a three goal lead. Princeton has scored five times on all five of their shots on goal. They've taken 13 shot attempts thus far. They're getting really good looks in there. So long as that shooting percentage can stay high. Miller has got that height advantage. Works her way out of some traffic. Mullum a run, she's one-on-one. -on -one. Tough angle and she'll score! Oh, really great. In fact, I was like, is she gonna pass it out here? Is she gonna be a little bit more persistent? Persistent pays off absolutely here. She does a little bit of a hitch fake, takes it strong hand, and just nails it past Boone. 
Kyla Sears is on the precipice of scoring 60 goals, but there are a bunch of 30 and 40 goal scorers in this lineup for Princeton. Kate Mullum's one of them, 32nd on the year. We saw Grace Taukas a little bit earlier get her 40th. Mackenzie Blake is in the closing in on the mid-30s. This has been a tremendous group all around in the attack this year. And what we're just in terms of experience question marks coming in, but they have proved that to be no problem here throughout this 2022 season. Well, you really see the compounding effect of so much experience gathered throughout the course of a season. And so you can see the Princeton coaches strategically flexing some really great muscles that have been building throughout this entire season. It's not a surprise that Mullum can hit that. It's not a surprise that Miller and Blake are ready and, and capable on the crease. It's not a surprise that Bunano comes in hard. It's not a surprise that Grace Talkis comes in hard. Bouncing ball, Tigers are on it. Marge Donovan again, she'll go all the way back with this one. The last three draws have gone the way of Princeton, already with a four goal lead. And it's just one in the plus column for Yale so far today. As Olivia Pugh has this one. She'll change some spots and the Tigers, four goals up already and looking for more. Caucus, a lot of hesitations. Kyla Sears, no point today, but no problem for Prince. Now she's coming her way on in. Got it away and scored as the flag came out. And what a one to make it the all-time lead in Princeton goals. 199 goals this woman has scored in her season so far at Princeton. Look at this, it's all heart. She shoots it. Like she can't help but shoot it and finds the back of the net still. I think she hit her head on the, the turf. She doesn't care. Oh, Kyla Sears doing Kyla Sears. It's gotta be nice to be at 199. It's a clean number, I like it. I'm sure she's gonna be chasing down 200, but this is the thing, she doesn't care about the goals that she scores. It's a job she's gotta do. Uh, she said in so many different interviews and, and even talking to her last week, I don't think about it while I'm doing it. It's my job as a leader, as an attacker. And, you know, she's been brilliant. It's not like in these games you see her doing the same thing every time. She's so dynamic. And on top of it all, she does so much other work outside of just scoring. She creates plays. She's moving through. And on a day like today where she's being face guarded, I mean, people don't talk about There's a lot of stuff you have to do when you're being face guarded to just even be relevant in the offense. Uh, but when she gets the ball, she knows. It just, it speaks to my heart, my competitive heart, where you're just like, she cannot not do that. Oh, so oh, good. 199 career goals, number one in Princeton history, 96 assists, number one in Princeton history, and 295 career points now, number one in Princeton history. The all-time greatest offensive player in Tiger history and having it done during a pandemic-ridden time in the Ivy League. Impressive what she has done all throughout her career. You know, one more thing here before we get back to the game and to take a look at where she where she's stationed. As you said, humble as they come, you did an interview with her in 2018 after the Tigers beat Penn, after she broke your freshman scoring record. You asked her, you know, what do you love doing most? Is it scoring goals? And she said she loves the ride, the yeah. defensive side of things, the getting back after it. And a similar question a few weeks ago when we chatted with her and the answer was exactly the same. She's just changed the, uh, <laughs> nothing's really changed in terms of her, just a few years gone by, but the same, uh, same soul and same heart. She is a record holder for sure. She, she is just a great personality also, thrilling some of her goals, but at the end of the day, it's, it's hard work over time um, and you can't, you can't make her up. I mean, she, she is just built herself an incredible game along with her teammates. Sophie Whiteway nearly had that one, wasn't able to get her footing. So Yale, who, if we can spend a moment on them, this is, you know, this is the first time they've done this as a program. They've never played in the Ivy League tournament until Friday's game against Cornell. Obviously this being their first Ivy League final. This, it, it is tremendous what they've done since Erica Bamford has taken over. She took over in 2016, and wins did not come right away. They had two wins in conference, one, then two, 
then one. Then they went one and one in the 2020 shortened season. And to go six and one this year is tremendous. So they certainly have resolved, but Sam Fish will shut that down on Taylor Lane. Wow, Everson to Lane, that was a beautiful look, an incredible grab by Taylor Lane. She's such a good, uh, she dips behind, she cuts so beautifully behind, but Fish, ready for it. Sam Fish has not been tested a whole lot in the early going, but she has been excellent. She has stopped three of five shots on goal, and the Tigers are up five and have the ball here late in this first quarter. Mackenzie Blake is alone, down she goes, then down toes the ball in the back of the net. It's, it's like scoring while you're falling is the theme of the Tiger game today. Again, she's pound down low and just so incredibly is able to grab this ball from Kari Bunano and just, I'm falling, I'm falling, I'm just gonna release it. Boom, in the back of the net. Mackenzie Blake, man. She has showed up today. The Tigers offensively are in an unbelievable zone right now. Eight shots on goal and they've scored all eight times. You know, I think you were talking a little bit about this time being Yale's first time. Yeah. You, you think it's the same field, it's the same people they played a week ago um, when they did such a beautiful job coming back on Princeton. Uh, but you see that the experience over time really does add up and it's in the favor of the Tigers today. The Tigers are not, it's not that they're not working hard, they're not working too hard, they're being very efficient. And Yale is just a little bit trying to find its place here. Sky's doing her best in, in, in this draw to try to get this to herself. Um, and that's gotta be a little bit of disruption too. Yale's used to getting the draw, they're used to being able to have a possession and they're having to defend on more, more frequent uh, times than they're used to uh, headed into the Princeton offensive end. And they're going to get a change in goal. Cami Donadio is in the first year player, is going to be in the mix for Yale. And who can blame Erica Bamford trying to change something up here? You can't just keep going forward when the game's going like this. So Cami Donadio is going to come in and try and provide some relief here for the Yale Bulldogs. Yeah, smart to just try to make a, ch a change of personnel. Boone has done such a great job this, this season. But they need a definite change of pace out here. They're, they're a super capable team. I wouldn't discount them, not even kind of. They have so many scoring threats. And uh, you know, we talked about the Tigers, really their own, their lone Achilles heel this year has been the draw. That's really the only thing that they're not, you know, top of the conference or right behind top of the conference in. On the other side for Yale, their St. Percentage, 40% as a group, that's sixth in the ancient age. That's been a, more of a challenge than some other areas for them this year. And the Tigers, they scored 17 goals on 26 shots on goal in the game last Saturday. So they have certainly reduplicated that effort here. Denadio this year, seven games. She has gotten three starts. She's got a save percentage of 357. And Yale finally stops some bleeding here. They get on the board. Looks like Taylor Everson finished that one off. And that makes it 8 3 here late in the quarter. Yeah, it was, a, it was a great move inside. Pew's having a little bit of a hard time on this one, um, keeping Everson out just as she's so shifty um, and just ducking in there, giving every kind of fake she possibly can. Kind of a little bit of a weak shot. Fish looks like she's not exactly ready for it. Um, it kind of trips by. You know, that's that's a frustrating thing, I'm, I'm guessing, for Fish because she knows she has that save in her stick, but that one got by her. If you watch the game last Saturday, it was unbelievably tight and there were runs, but they were very equal runs. Just to run through it real quick here late in the quarter. Tigers led 2-0, then it was 2-2, it was 4-2 Princeton, then it was 4-4, then it was 5-5, it was 10-6 Tigers at half, then Yale made it 10-9 Princeton, then it was 13-9 Tigers, then it was 13-12 Princeton. And then the Tigers did enough down the stretch to keep that separation. But for the longest time, it was a game of runs. It was tight. It was back and forth. And the Tigers have had a couple of four-goal runs here outside of some Yale goals. And that's why they lead 8-3. But a chance to cut it here. Clean win by Sky Carasquillo. Twenty seconds left in the quarter. 
Yale could get a goal here. They could go in with a little bit of momentum into the second quarter. Tigers defending well. They don't want to get any tight shots. Donovan at least will deflect it away to the sideline. And Marker gets dumped down there. And it, Tigers might be able to just live with that anyway as a chance is never going to come to Cage anyway. That's it for the first quarter. The Tigers come out hot. Eight shots on goal. Eight goals and defensively pretty sturdy. They lead eight to three after 15 minutes of play as Kyla Sears adds some individual accolades. The all-time leader now in goals in Princeton history. 8-3 Tigers, one quarter done. It's the greatest combination of athletics and academics you can get in a university, and it's really humbling being surrounded by so many like-minded people. It's an institution with a lot of history. Now I'm in this place where I know how to balance my life, and it's great. Here, there is such a focus on academics and athletics, and so you get to play at a really high level, but you also get to be in the classroom at a really high level. It's been special to throw on this, uh, this color every day. It's been something I'm very grateful for. I love when families are able to come here and I can tell them they don't have to worry about paying for their care. They've got enough to worry about taking care of their sick child. Every single person that contributes is a part of that St. Jude family that makes that happen. Because of donors, we're giving families hope. Ticket Smarter is proud to support St. Jude Children's Research Hospital. One dollar of every transaction will go directly to benefit St. Jude Children's Research Hospital. Visit TicketSmarter.com to learn how you can help today. Eight shots on goal, eight goals for the Princeton Tigers alongside Krista Samaras. I'm Jeff O'Connor, and talk more about this Tiger offensive output. Let's throw it down to the field and Natalie Calibut. Natalie? Yeah, guys, we've seen Kyla Sears make some incredible goals. One actually was seventh on SportsCenter's top 10 that we saw on Friday night. She slid, did a behind the back to score the goal. It's no surprise that she is now breaking the record for all-time goal scores. We saw a really incredible goal there in the first quarter. 199, sitting on, potentially going to that shiny new number, that new level of 200 that's never been touched before. Olivia Homp, 198 goals. Well, she went out with a bang when she was done with the senior. She scored 18 points in two Ivy League tournament games in 2017 to give the Tigers a a victory, an Ivy League title that was up at Cornell, final against Cornell. It's it's so awesome, you know, not to bring it back to Chris Saylor, but for so many records to be broken this year by every everybody on the field. Really, you got Marge Donovan doing some damage, you got Fish doing some damage, and of course you have Kyla, who's had such a prolific career uh, with a pandemic just you know smacked right in the middle of that. She's played collectively in less games. Um, but she's been so potent in nearly every one of them, particularly the ones that are higher pressure. So back to the draw, and the Tigers will take that one. And one of your keys, Krista, was certainly for them to be competitive. They have absolutely been competitive thus far. Here's DeVito, a shot. That one got a bit of a steep bounce. No problem there for Donadio. And see if that counts as the stop should. It was, in theory, a shot on goal. So. Yale gets a stop after falling short in the draw. Let's see what they do here. It is indeed a save. So the first save of the game for Yale comes in the second quarter. Leary's so been three of three thus far. It's been off the draw. They've had trouble transitioning. Okay, so Yale's got the ball here, down five. They've thrown seven shots on net. Fish has stopped four. Make it five. Great low save by Fish. <clears throat> That's a powerful drive coming in. But again, you want, Princeton is trying to force outside shots. That was an outside shot. So you'd effectively say that's a win for the Princeton defense? That was, could uh, have been a little higher quality shot for yeah, sure there. The Tigers yeah. will all be happy to concede those all day. I like to say we see Nina Montez out here. So I always think whenever they put in Nina, 
um, that they're looking for some, some big drive and she's got it right where she really likes it, finding somebody inside. Mackenzie Blake, a little great tough, save. A little bit tougher save there for Denadio. She stops it, so trying to build some momentum, the Bulldogs, and that ball errantly tossed away. And that's been a, a focus here early on. The Tigers have been razor sharp in taking care of the ball. They've got just one turnover here in the first 17 minutes. Well, this is what you see, you know, teams just starting to put together a whole game. Uh, Princeton in the last couple of games has really started to go end to end with effort, with focus, with concentration. Um, they're, they're utilizing so many different players of every grad year, uh, and, and that has limited their, their unforced errors for sure. Yale, with a young team, you'd expect there to be some. There is goal number 200. Like so many we've seen before, a little bit of a move close to cage and finding the open area. 200 Take. career goals for Kyla Sears. She takes it in hard on that 200th goal like she has so many times before. It almost looks so clean and easy, but she's got that beautiful pull and she knows it's going in. She knows it's going in and her team is there to cheer for her. That's the one thing, you know, when Kyla scores uh, and it happens frequently, her team is so pumped, whether it's a thriller or not. Uh, and they're, you know, you watch this Tiger team, they're so pumped when any scorer uh, puts a ball in the back of the net. But to see them celebrate Kyla, uh, it's a tribute to her incredible leadership for sure, respect that she's generated among her team because of all the work. All over the bomb, but, but still an uncanny ability to get in there and get it done. 61 goals for Kyla Sears. Her career best is 64, if you can remember back to 2018. Feels like forever ago. That was a different brain I had then, I think. <laughs> <laughs> what an, I mean, the, the, the amount of talent and the pipeline that comes through here of just great players, her and Tess Diorsi those years, Ivy League championships, NCAA runs. And the Tigers, again, competitive on the draw. Sophie Whiteway. We didn't see much of Sophie Whiteway on Friday. She's been very active here on this championship Sunday. Yeah, I think Princeton is executing its plan of disrupting the draw, and it's and it's taken Yale out of their game a little bit. They they definitely rest on that advantage. DeVito Ooh. will bury that one. Nice. Brilliant feed. Brilliant feed is right. I think that was Grace Takas finding DeVito in the center there. We see DeVito on attack a little bit more than than usual in this game. And I think she offers so much great movement in there. Obviously a great clean shot. Yes, it was Takas. DeVito just finding that top upper corner. Great look, great placement. Way to go. They call her Danny. <laughs> I said, do Easy. you even know who Danny is? She's right. like, yes, Krista, I have gotten that joke my whole life. I'm like, okay, 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 I understand, I understand. It's not like I'm that clever. She, um, she's had a nice year as a role player. That's her fifth goal of the year. Now, Kyla Sears recently said on the Princeton Lax cast that, that, you know, they've had some good wins, they've had some good games, but they feel like they haven't played a, a peak game or they haven't hit the top of their game, their apex of their game. And so far, <laughs> we've got a long way to go in this one. But for 18 minutes, this is about as peak of a game as you could play in all areas of the field. And the Tigers are doing that. I mean, I think you with with Sky Carasquilla, we've said how good she is. That Princeton is getting the advantage here is a huge team effort. Uh, the strategy that the coaches are deploying here, the way that the players are executing to, to stop her from doing what she does so well is, is a massive feat. The Tigers have been methodical and meticulous in all areas of the field. The draws are 8-7 Yale. They have one turnover. They've scored 10 goals on 12 shots on goal, and Sam Fish has stopped five of eight. Impeccable thus far. Another easy feed. Takas got bumped pretty hard. Whistle will be subsequently called. That was a great slide by Kelsey Dunn. She's a Yale captain. <clears throat> uh, she just came in a little bit too hard on the body there. And so the Tigers get this shot at the best hash in town. Talkus, that powerful shot, and she'll score. You know, this is my favorite shot to shoot. 
Um, I would say that Grace reminds me of myself, or maybe I remind myself of Grace. Um, but she comes in so hard here. She's so powerful. You can watch her just a little bit. Um, it's like a little duck uh, of the shoulder or the head or the nod, and then she's just putting it in the hardest place for any goalie to save it, and that's midweek side. You got to take a strong step to that. You got to step it even before she releases it, um, which goalies don't want to do. And it's just it, almost impossible to make that save. Grace Tuckus. 11 to 3. It was 1 0 Yale in the opening minute. And then a couple of four goal runs by Princeton made it 8 3. And they've scored the first three of the second quarter here. Just waiting for some late changes here. Another draw here. Sky Carasquillo on Friday did a really nice job, but there were some moments where Shannon Brazier got the best of her for, for pockets at a time, and the Tigers have gotten her a few times today. Draws are even, 8-8 eight to eight today. I, I just kind of had a chills run up my body because... Um, because it's a, it's a, it's really hard, and we've been talking about how good Sky Carasquillo is at the draw, um, and how just different it must feel to be Yale not being able to get this advantage in possessions, um, and just how handedly Princeton is doing and putting themselves in this great position. It almost makes their offensive sets they're so much more settled than I've ever seen them be. They're looking for way more options than I've ever seen them have, and this is not you know Yale's defense is doing a great job man to man here. Here's Nina Montez. Interesting to see what her role looks like come next year. She'll probably get some more minutes. She's scored quite a bit this year, 16 goals, but when you probably compare it to the minutes she's been on the field, it makes it even more impressive. Yeah, time play to goal scored. Yep. She she is so good out there. Harry Bonanno fought off there by Denadio. Pretty good stop there. They'll stay with Princeton, though. They'll get a fresh 60-timer. I have to give it to Mary Megan Wright as well. First year, who's just had the big task of, oh, this is a big 1v1. Help came late. Montez curling with the left hand. Got it to go. And Sears is fired up about it, too. And Montez, I mean, quickest feet in the game. She seems tiny out there, but she just rockets a shot out of her stick. She's so good. Kyla finds her in here. And wow, you just like oh, her ponytail Princess goes with goal that goal shot. Um, she's got Montez. such power. I can't wait to see what she does in the future. Unbelievable, the goal by Nina Montez there. It's been a well-rounded scoring effort thus far. Let's step aside for a break. There's a timeout on the field, 10-10 to go in the second quarter. It's Ivy League Championship Sunday, and the Tigers are rolling 12-3 Princeton. We'll be back with more right after this on ESPN+. Plus. Erica Bamford took over in 2016. A stellar job she's done this year. We talked a little earlier. The Yale in recent years really hasn't won more than one or two conference games at a time. They won six this year. They won Friday night. They're in the Ivy League final in a conference that's normally dominated by the same three or four teams. And uh, 
sometimes tough for Chris to, you know, Friday was so un emotionally big for them. A huge triumph, the first time they've ever done that. Sometimes it'd be tough to carry it over to that Sunday against the season team like Princeton, but uh, obviously they're going to be here to stay. Yeah, I think joy can take a lot out of you. Uh, and I think this, you know, being in this for the first time, it's it's, it's a really big deal. And, you know, the, the amount of pressure that you can feel as a player, even if it's the pressure of joy and being so excited. So that's what you learn over time. That's why I think Yale in the future is going to be just a team that's nationally going to have to be reckoned with because they have such young players out here who are getting such incredible experience. Uh, there were no, we you know Yale team after this where it's the first time in their Ivy League championship. So no more teams will have to bear that weight. Uh, and this one is just trying to find its way into this game. For a conference that really is traditionally over the years, Princeton, Dartmouth, and another save by Fish. She has been in the zone trying to find the ball though. And that have been a crease violation there. So picked up. Great drive by Penoyer too. I mean, and, and to be to be just sort of like, I would say she was really <laughs> taken by Fish there. Um, Fish has made not that many saves, but each one of them is hard earned. Holy cow! Six stops on nine shots on goal for for Sam Fish today. The, the finish on Yale. You know, it's always Princeton, it's always Penn, it's always Dartmouth. Usually, it's Cornell. For them to skip by some of the traditional powers and, and be in this game against Princeton on the road in New Jersey certainly speaks a lot to the year they've had. And getting over that first big hump, you know what I mean? Like to, to now have yourself here as a as a program, um, especially with young players, like we, we will see Yale around for a long time. It does a lot for program confidence. Sophie Whiteway is going to get it going. A stop there by Denadio. And running into Whiteway who stripped her clean of it. And it's probably going to go to Yale. It seems, no, Tiger's going to keep it. So Sophie Whiteway is having a nice game doing some of the unheralded things. We saw a little bit of that on Friday from a few different players. We saw Maria Pansini had four cause turnovers for Princeton. Sophie Whiteway's had a lot of small plays that have mattered so far in this one. Yeah, she's been a huge utility player for, for Princeton, doing the dirty work, stepping up in the draw, trying to make disruptions early on in the season. Lillian Stout coming back and, and just you know, doing what she can when she can. Here you see her fighting back there. Marge Donovan's got five draw controls. That's been a big, big reason the Tigers are where they are. Here's a run by Emily Clarit. And Yell. Let's see if they can try and crack the code a little bit here. Sam Fish has been excellent. Yale on last Saturday, he took 40 shots, 31 run goal. Clean check, it appears. Good job recovering by Fallon Vaughn, though. Now she's stripped of it. The Tigers got it. It's Samantha DeVito. That's got to be frustrating. Vaughn is such a, a strong handle on the ball. I see her legs taped up. Uh, I don't know if that's limiting her mobility or power, but she just got bested there by a few Tigers. Looks like they're already coming for the double here, so it's unfortunate. It's got to be frustrating for the Bulldogs. Donovan just plowing her way through, has the clear for Princeton. And after a rare Tiger turnover, it gets shut down at the other end by the Princeton D. Talkus wide of the eight meter. Princeton has gotten to all the areas they want. They've gotten close to the crease, inside the eight meter from a smidge of distance, and they've scored in all different types of way thus far. There's Takis, one-on-one -on -one for a moment. What a slide and a score! 10 goals is the edge right now. Yeah, and you can see, you can see the just frustration of Peyton Vaughn Yale defender, this that strength coming in. I mean, she leans into it. I would say there's no other Princeton Tiger that uses her body. Um, and and you, you this defensively speaking of body, you see Devito there. That's just incredible triple team as Vaughn goes down. And here you have at the other end Grace Takis just using that incredibly strong body to get and plow that shot. 
into the cage. It's really hard to be able to hold that ball, especially when the defender's on your strong side and nonetheless shoot with your strong hand. Again, we're talking about Princeton firing on all cylinders here. Yeah. This is this is a game they put together and a complete package from the defense to the offense. You've got everybody doing their part, starting with Sam DeVito in that great hold. You have two upperclassmen coming in to fortify either side uh, and then getting it all the way down for Grace to be able to do her thing. And the reserves and the role players have each come up with, uh, if not a few plays, at least one play that has made a difference on a possession, on a goal, on a defensive stop. You know, Marge Donovan just doing Marge Donovan things. She'll take the draw, gets dumped, whistle comes before it. Yeah, everybody has made a contribution, it feels like. I think the queen of a, of a massive role player. I mean, she just goes in to do the dirty work on the draw, come up to distribute to the offense, and reset and get ready to do it again. I mean, of course, she's an incredible defender, so she's got a big role down there, but it's a huge role she plays there. You know, Mons has that great agility. Side to side, she'll score another. It's Goodness. like everybody knows she's about to take a couple of those quick side steps with those feet and open herself up. She does such a great job of leaning to the left and then be able to get this right-handed shot. Oh, she slips it right by, stick side mid. Uh, incredible goal by freshman Nina Montez. I love when she's in. Um, and you like you said earlier, you know, she, she doesn't get all the playing time, but when she's in, she's hugely effective. What a performance here by the Tigers in the first half. 14 goals and a half. This is the most goals the Tigers have scored in an Ivy League final. You take a look traditionally what they've done. It's been usually 12 goals, 13 goals. The most they've scored in a final was 2015, 14 goals. So I believe as we get noted here, the clock was starting to run in pockets here since Talk has scored to make it a 10 goal edge, but and there was a little bit of confusion whether or not the clock should go or should not be running. The clock now at 4.17. There's a penalty on the Yale side. I believe that was for when Donovan... That was always when Donovan got dumped, but no, Montez scored after that. So there was a penalty somewhere in there. Two minutes around the board. It's against Peyton Vaughn. And whistle way away from goal. They were off sides. Tigers will... Take it from about the end line. 14 goals the Tigers scored in the 2015 Ivy League Championship Final against Penn. That was here at Class of 52 Stadium. So seemingly they're going to set a record for that in an Ivy League Final. You know, really what they're playing is a 6v5 right now because Kyla has brought Mary Megan Wright all the way out. Um, and there's a lot of space in here. A lot of space. And, and again, with Kyla incredible goal scorer here this is a really great opportunity for you know a preview of what this team is going to look like next year um just sort of rendering herself outside of the attack it's it's been fun to watch players it, it, it's always fun going through the years seeing which players will break out and when they get more playing time more touches what that means and obviously we've seen quite a few tigers this year start to break out and they are going to be in good shape for next year even going to be losing one of the better players in Ivy League history and it seems like they're going to be in great shape with Buonanno, Mullum, Takis, Montez. I'm sure there are more coming that are going to be perhaps challenging you, Kyla, Olivia along the way for all those numbers. As they should, as they should. Mackenzie Blake, one of them didn't mention her, somehow left her out. She's been she awesome just, today. <laughs> sometimes I feel like they can hear us at their hearts so and they're like, listen, um, a beautiful take there by Mackenzie Blake. Um, she's just so good down low. And look at that beautiful control. Taking a little swirl around in the meantime, screening the goalie from what, you know, to be able to see that ball in her stick. It's a, it's a great move. Um, she's got such great control there. And the comfort that she's gotten and accumulated over the course of the season um, is just is paying off huge dividends now. A, a lot of the experience by, by the, the Princeton Tigers now accumulating and paying off. Um, and they're playing like seasoned veterans on this field. 
Mackenzie Blake. It's an awesome game for her. Four goals. Tigers shot eight for eight in the first quarter. They have posted a 7-0 frame here in the second. I want to talk about complete efforts. This has been an unreal one here, and we're basically at the end of the half here. Yale's going to get the ball, it appears. A couple of equipment fell. Oh, the Tigers are going to have the ball here, and they can melt this away. They're going to go into half with at least a 12-goal lead in what is likely the final game at 1952 Stadium here in 2022 for Chris Taylor's career, for the numerous seniors on this Princeton squad. It'll be fascinating to see what the what it'll be like in the second half trying to manage a 12-goal lead because you, you don't want to take your foot off the pedal in a, in a do-or-die game, but it'll be fascinating to see what the last 30 minutes hold on both sides here. Yeah, well, I would expect that Yale's going to make some... Um, pretty pretty interesting adjustments in the half they're going to be necessary this is there's no other time to waste here so they can try some things that maybe they would might not have otherwise uh, Bamford is a strategic coach uh, they've got a great coaching staff Montez about a dozen to go Tokus not able to handle Sears is <laughs> feels like she hasn't touched the ball in a few minutes because she hasn't and looks like the Tigers not going to have the ball anyway here, but that's going to do it for the half. Wow, what a half. 15 to 3. I believe we're going to have Natalie chat with Chris Saylor here in a moment. So we're going to hang out for a minute. Krista, some, some thoughts here. I mean, I mean, we've kind of said it all this half, but e even the little things, the, you know, the, the non goals, the, the non goalkeeper stuff has been brilliant today. Yeah, I mean, I think Princeton was looking to take action in the interstitial spaces, and, you know, it, it's for, for Yale, against Yale especially, it's the it's the draw. They are doing the little things, even on the draw, in order to just give themselves some advantage, and that advantage has has absolutely put the favor in, in, the, in, the, in the Tigers' den, if you will. We're good to go here in a moment. The Tigers scored 15 goals on 19 shots on goal. I believe we're waiting for the signal. We should be good to throw it. We are going to throw it down. Let's go to Natalie Calabat, who's standing by with Princeton head coach. Coach Saylor with me here now. Coach. Well, I think we just have to keep the momentum going. You know, I think we've been phenomenal on the draw, and that was an area we were totally dominated in a week ago. So we've definitely put a lot of time into prepping for that. And... You know, that's leading us to have so many more possessions and our attack is on fire and our, our D is doing a fantastic job too. Someone else who's on fire is Kyla Sears, 200 career goals. What has been so impressive about her play? Well, just how tough she is um, and how, you know, you see they're face guarding her tight, but she still finds a way to get herself open and contribute to the play, not just for herself, but for the whole team. She's just such an inspiration to all of us and has had a phenomenal career. What have been the emotions like as this is your final home game here? Well, honestly, we're trying to just keep a, a, a neutral mindset right now. Last weekend, there was just so much energy and, and excitement. And I think, you know, we want to go out. We want to play a great game. We want to battle for this Ivy Tournament Championship. Um, and I'm trying not to think about that, honestly. <laughs> What will be your message to the team in the locker room? Keep it up. I mean, the, the things we're doing are, are working. We can't take our foot off the gas pedal. We have to continue, um, you know, to, to dominate the draw and have good defensive sets and just really make smart decisions offensively. Coach, thanks for taking some time with us. We'll let you get in that locker room. Thank you very much. Guys, back to you. Unbelievable first half for the Tigers. They go eight for eight from the field in the first quarter and they blank. Yale in the second quarter, 7-0, 15-3 at the half, 30 minutes away from an Ivy League title. More when we come back. You're watching the Ivy League Championship on ESPN+. Plus.
Walk a mile in our shoes, from the classroom to the locker room. Here, our promise and our passion propel us down paths few dare to travel. We venture forward, energized with every step. We defy convention in defining ourselves, pushing to achieve, strive, and lead at the highest level. With teammates, teachers, coaches, and classmates at our side. Together, we are Tigers. Together, we are Princeton. surrounded by so many like-minded people. It's an institution with a lot of history. Now I'm in this place where I know how to balance my life, and it's great. Here, there is such a focus on academics and athletics, and so you get to play at a really high level, but you also get to be in the classroom at a really high level. It's been special to throw on this, uh, this color every day. It's been something I'm very grateful for. game it's 15 to 3 Princeton last weekend though it was Chris Saylor day the legendary Princeton head coach retiring at the end of this 2022 season she had some great words for the crowd I've just been so grateful and humbled and honored to be your coach and to coach here at Princeton for such a long time um, it's in my heart you all are in my heart you all have given me just an incredible career and experience and my relationship with you is going to last long after I coach my last game here. And that's really the best thing. An emotional Chris Saylor, her squad, eight days ago, won the Ivy League title. They're 30 minutes away from clinching an Ivy League championship and an NCAA tournament berth. We'll come back with the second half right after this.
Along with Natalie Calbat and Krista Samaras, I'm Jeff O'Connor, 15-3 Princeton and a half, and let's get into the highlights. We could find a highlight for everyone, but there were definitely two big players at the forefront, Krista, for the Princeton Tigers. Yeah, well, you got Fish going crazy. I just saw some fans outside say, this, this game should be called Go Fish, uh, and I would agree. She's come up huge with some saves here, um, just all over the place. The focus, she's standing tall and just leading the defense from that end. But on the other end, you got Mackenzie Blake, first year freshman. Um, you got Mulham coming in here, but also then Mackenzie Blake finishing it off. Uh, this kid knows how to find the back of the cage, cage, and she's done it four times today. Mackenzie Blake, a fascinating with The Tigers, in recent memory, have not had a ton of players who are lefties, so to speak. So to see a, a player of her caliber is impressive, and we're going to see her for a long time here. The, the numbers, a ton of shots. Tigers were perfect on clears, barely turned the ball over, and gobbled up most of the ground balls in that first half. We are 30 minutes away in regulation from crowning an Ivy League champion. There has not been an Ivy League tournament champion since May 5th, 2019, and it was the Princeton Tigers who defeated Penn by a score of 13 to nine. The Tigers are looking to win their fourth straight Ivy League tournament championship and guarantee themselves a berth in the 2022 NCAA tournament. Uh, big change, Sky Carasquillo did not take that draw. It was Jenna Kalignan. She did a pretty good job on Friday and spending against the Tigers last Saturday. Definitely the, the secondary piece after Kara Squillo, who would pick up a lot of those draw controls. Looks like Olivia Pugh might have gone off for a penalty here on the Princeton side. We just saw her go to the bench. So Pugh is indeed off. Mary Megan Wright is going to get a free position shot here. Well, it sounds like check to the head is going to be the call. Well, Yale's got a long way to go, and Fish won't even let him get started. I believe Fish got that one. Maybe it hit the frame, but either way, it stays out. So Tigers are woman down for two minutes. Kalignan, down she goes. Good movement. Fallon Vaughn will score, and Yale, much like they did to start the game less than a minute in, they've got a goal. Yeah, and it's a, it's a good goal. They'll take it, it especially with, with Princeton, a, a woman down, want to be able to take advantage of that, and Fallon Vaughn does it. Uh, that huge power shot just scooting right past Fish's stick. Dominant side. Fish definitely wants to step into that, uh, but Fallon will take it. Vaughn, 33rd. Yale fans were happy to get excited about something, so pretty loud eruption on that goal. They need a lot more of them here if they want to mount a comeback. Now, as we mentioned briefly there late in the first half, uh, this all this plays to the Tigers' advantage. It's still more than a 10-goal lead, so Yale's not going to get a chance to kind of reset and savor some extra clock here. That clock's going to keep going for a little bit unless the score gets a little tighter. In a second half, but that's the case here, at least for now. Sophie Whiteway, a nice knock to herself. She's got it. Sophie Whiteway has stepped up huge. I mean, I, I would say she's in large part a uh, reason why 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 Princeton has gotten the the edge here on the draw. No one, though we were calling this a storyline beforehand, it's huge for both teams. Uh, I think that the sting the sting is felt by by Yale not quite being able to get into the swing of their offensive game because frankly Princeton has had far many more possessions. Marge Donovan's got seven as there's a great lane to the net. Bonanno, though, is absolutely stonewalled by Denadio. That's a big one. Yeah, Denadio's had some really good big saves, and that was key. Uh, just giving Yale a possession again it, with the clock running, as you mentioned. They're going to need to be efficient, and they're going to get need to get some really good scoring opportunities. But listen, this, this team has incredible offensive threats. We haven't seen them in full force today but they have loads of options. There, there are plenty of them. It feels like we've hardly called Olivia Panoyer's name. Olivia Marker talked about her a little bit in the first half. Just four goals for Yale. I think possession time, we just haven't yep. seen them with the ball much. Draw, draws are 12 to 10 in favor of Princeton. Everson's been pretty good. She's got a hat trick now. So the first two goals of this second half have gone the way of Yale. 
And they have got it to within 10. Yeah, Everson, I mean, again, we said she's shifty, but she just doesn't give up. She's sort of relentlessly looking for a scoring opportunity. And here, she just cruises past Pew and then Pansini to put that ball in the back of the net. So, you know, she's been hugely effective. As you mentioned, two goals already. This is her third. I mean, without her in this game, you know, she's sort of single-handedly keeping keeping Yale in this on the offensive end, uh, which is kind of insane because Yale has a ton of people to score. Marker, Panoyer have been relatively quiet. A goal for Marker, nothing for Panoyer. Taylor Lane, and there hasn't been a whole lot of shots either, even when they've had the ball. They've turned it over six times, which isn't an exorbitant amount. But it's enough in a, a game where every single possession matters, especially when the Tigers have only lost it three times. Tigers had the arrow, I believe that's that's the reason they're going to get the ball here off the whistle, or perhaps not, as Donovan will get bumped. The Tigers do keep, keep the arrow. <laughs> a lot of a lot of riding here. I wonder if we're going to get a close to maybe a flag coming out here. Uh, they're dangerously close to yeah. three fouls for the green card. Did we get it? Looks like an official timeout here. We're on a stoppage with 10:19. I think it's a counting fouls issue. So three fouls, uh, you know. Um, in the transition is going to call for a green card which is usually a one minute penalty so what the sorting out happen here looks like a yep so there it is job partner and we'll have Yo player will go off and when you're down 10 and the clock's running you, you definitely have to try and outside your comfort zone when maybe you don't have the ball and see if you can force the other team into some errors. Yeah, I mean, it's a, to just be using hustle to get the ball back, I mean, obviously that's what you, you prefer, um, you know, letting the fouls add up to be able to, to be man down um, against the Princeton, you know, attack. So Penoyer's off. So Tigers, woman up for a minute. Tigers probably not in clock management mode just yet, and no need to be when they've been pumping in goals all day. They'll stop a brief yell run. Looks like Grace Talkus on the inside there. The Tigers get a goal back. Yeah, we see a little bit more of what we've seen already this game is just a connection between players there, Mullum to Talkus. Um, she just takes this beautiful pass, turns around with a lefty shot. It's hard to, to, to save a shot that's coming in so fast and hard, especially from a skilled attacker, and also going uh, to a top corner there. Really great play, really great connection. And again, what we're seeing is the Tigers just being so composed. They're finding each other well. Uh, they're, they're looking for each other so beautifully. And again, all said and done, um, without a, a ton of input from Kyla Sears offensively, two great goals. Uh, but watching this offensive unit work without her is a really good thing um, as we look into the postseason play for for either team who comes out of this. Looks like it's likely going to be Princeton, but Yale's not going to give up. Not yet. Not at all. Donovan trying to get over the line. She will. Thinking about it. Has options. And looks like there are... <laughs> Every area of the field doubles perhaps coming early in offensive sets. Now they'll go back off a little bit as the Tigers have solved it to some degree. And Denadio popped that one free. Sky ball and flag down. Emily Clarita's on it. And it's going to be Yale ball. Great defensive set there. Great heads of play. It's been as being on the Princeton side for so long, calling all the games. It's always been fascinating to see the the upperclassman who's the big scorer hand the baton off to the the underclassman who's the big scorer, and we're seeing that here with Kyla Sears and Grace Takas. We've seen it with Olivia Homp and Eric McMunn, who overlapped for a few years. Testy Orsi and Kyla Sears. It's, it's always fascinating to watch the baton be passed in real time as the, another goal will be scored on the Yale side. That's Jenna Kalignon. And Yale's got three goals here in the first seven minutes. Yeah, and Yale's favorite place to score is coming down on that high drive. Uh, you know, just a powerful drive. I think Princeton defensively wants to be able to, to push that 
that kid off her angle a little bit more. Jenna's just so good and powerful at getting that that shot off. Really incredible. It's still a 10 goal lead. Princeton up by 10. It's not really about the notes. I want them to find the music. I will push you. I will test you. I'll demand everything you've got. What do you get? Everything I have. game where the Tigers have scored 16 goals it would be easy to overlook the work Sam Fish has done today she has been strong in goal and for more on that let's throw it down to Natalie Caliban it's not a surprise with a name like Fish that Sam Fish's family has ties to the Navy her dad is a pilot and her two older brothers both played club lacrosse at the Academy Princeton fans are happy that she decided to come to New Jersey rather than follow her family to Annapolis. She remembers watching the Tigers as an eighth grader when they played near her hometown of San Diego. She's been hooked ever since. The Tigers got out there to San Diego, the West Coast. They played a few games out there, and Sam Fish had some friends, family on hand for those. Nice experience for her as a senior. As, you know, most of the kids that end up coming to Princeton – it's a lot of Northeast. It's a lot of Connecticut. It's a lot of New Jersey, New York, maybe some Pennsylvania mixed in. Good chunk of Massachusetts as well, but it's rare that a California a California player comes their way, and Sam Fish has been a vitally important West Coaster for this East Coast squad. Totally. She said it was just a lot of pride to be able to come out and, and, and you know, stand on solid ground out here uh, in the East and, and be on a successful Tiger team and, and leading it from the back, uh, but to have her teammates with her, be able to see sort of like where she grew up. A lot of the the, the, the players were out there. Kyle Sears gets a ball, she puts it in the back of the net. I gotta stop my story there because here it is on a beautiful give and go. And this is a player who loves to go. Great connection. Um, and you can see her kind of basically making this long cut in. It's beautiful. She grabs it. There's no way she's missing that. Incredible connection with Grace Takis. And they do give an assist to Talkus on that goal. I was saying that, um, you know, that, that, that the, the players they went out to California was many, for many of the, the Princeton players, they'd never been to California. They're like, what is this insane? Here we go. We see Kyla's mom snuggled in a jacket with Kyla's number. She's got to be proud. It's been an unbelievable ride for this bunch. Kylo, one of a few seniors who elected to withdraw during the 2021 year, keep that athletic eligibility. Just about everyone came back who would have been a graduate in 2021. Some worked, some did internships, and they came ready to play here in 2022, and they have an unbelievable year. They've played so many ranked teams, they've beaten a lot of ranked teams, 7-0 in the Ivy and playing very, very well here in the Ivy League final. I mean, you want the season to build where you're playing your best lacrosse uh, in May as you're preceding the, the NCAA tournament. Uh, Princeton is just never looked stronger, putting all the pieces together, utilizing so many different people on the field. 
they've just, you can tell they've put in a lot of work because they're doing so many things in the smaller spaces on the field. It, is, it has shown every area today. 40 on the timer here. Third quarter's quickly winding down here. Montez, one on one. Hard double and a switch. Now he's got a beat towards the net, caught from behind illegally. And a card's gonna come out food too. Yeah, I mean, playing defense on Nina Montez where she is right now at about the 15 meters, that's really far out for someone whose feet are so quick uh, to be able to, to hold her. And she got the best of a Yale defender who then kind of came back and, and tried to go for that stick. Card it's really Yale hard being in this situation Emily as Yale. First time here, um, obviously the differential is, is big. You know that. Uh, so managing all these emotions, it may feel like, you know, right now, especially uh, the, the emotions are getting the best of, of Yale, even if they're just the emotions that keep you stuck. Uh, but this is going to be an incredible experience for a team that will definitely uh, show incredibly next year. There's certainly something real to the, the mantra of learning how to lose and learning how to win. Yeah, Yale has learned to win a lot this year. They're going to learn to perhaps uh, fall just short here in this and then be better for it come next season. Yeah, it creates a massive hunger. And, you know, now they know that they can and should be here. Um, it's, it's about avenging that, getting back here again next year and saying, well, we know what this feels like. So you get emotional experience, you get physical experience. Princeton's accumulated a lot of both. Tigers did a little clock managing here on this set. Ball comes free though, good hold by Yale. Kenya Boston trying to weave her way out of traffic, got obstructed illegally along the way, so whistle will go. That should, in essence, wipe away the rest of the Tiger woman up situation. The Kenya Tigers. Boston been spectacular for All Ivy honorable mention player. Waiting for, make sure they were on sides there was Taylor Everson. Bought as much time as she could then entered. And they're woman down here, so they're probably going to want to not let too much time go. They're gonna have to set up an offense that considers being woman down. Try to beat this Tiger defense. You can just see extra Tiger defender looming behind the ball. If they were even, it would be something like a backer. There was a spurt for Yale where they scored three goals here a little bit earlier in this quarter. The Tigers have felt in control even at this end of the field and now trying to wrap their arms around Marker. She's able to evade though, deep in the timer. Now it's Straka. The Tigers have looked comfortable all day. Neuer, though, finds a cutter foul, and Vaughn able to shrug it off, but fish a little bit better. Okay, that was an insane pass. That was an insanely strong catch. It was incredible that Fallon Vaughn could get that shot off, and above all, it was an incredible step to save. You can see Fish's body going everywhere, focused on cleanly saving that ball. I mean, a little bit more of what Fish has done a lot today. Tremendous job by Sam Fish. He's now stopped quite a few so far this this tournament. She's eight of 14 today. She was nine of 15 on Friday. If you're gonna live above 50% with the way this rest of this roster is built for Princeton, they're gonna have quite a bit of success. I asked Fish, you know, earlier on the week, like, do you think that taking that year off was really hard on you as a goalie because you're not getting that, you know, those mental reps, that emotional reps, that pressure reps of just being in a game. And, you know, she said, maybe, uh, but I did play a ton with my with my teammates. They did shoot on me. They got they moved to Nashville for a month and all did remote uh, internships. So she's like, we would just follow the field, find fields anywhere we could, and everybody would shoot on me. So doesn't seem like she skipped a beat. And she, again, really, she really has gotten better and better as the season has gone on. She's definitely saved her best for last for the, the stretch run to chase Yale down in the regular season. 
Kalignan, a bit of a shot, looked like it fooled a little bit of everyone there. She's got a goal, and that makes it a 10-goal game. I mean, that's the thing about it, about being a goalie, right? And this is what Fish would say, is there another shot that's going to come. Uh, so, you know, you, you, you rebound from a, an incredible save, and when you get scored on, Kalignan does a great job in there. She takes that shot from the right hash. Um, it really kind of goes in unconventionally with her right hand up. So clock's going to continue to wind down here. Here's the Yale side, 15 minutes left in regulation. Hoping there's some form of a run, build some excitement, shift momentum a bit. Carasquilla back out there. Sophie Whiteway. The draws are 16 to 10, Princeton. Make it 17 to 10. Sophie Whiteway's gotten five of them. Hot pass, though, it goes wide if everyone yells, going to get it back. Yeah, undoubtedly uh, a huge story for the game is Sophie's ability to. A few players up here for Yale. Maybe a chance. Marge Donovan says nah, and she'll hold on to it, and that'll do it for the quarter. The Tigers are 15 minutes away from their fourth straight Ivy League tournament championship. They're at home at Class of 1952 Stadium and Chris Saylor's final game on this turf, most likely. And what an opportunity. We'll be back with it when we come back. Tigers up by 10 in the Ivy League Championship Final. We'll be back in a moment. Yale nearly got it down to single digits, but Marge Donovan, elite level thinker, especially at the defensive end of the field, shut down the end of that third quarter to bring the Tigers into the fourth with Chris Saylor, her final 15 minutes of regulation as a head coach. For more on that, let's throw it down to Natalie Calabat. Guys, Princeton coach Chris Saylor is just 15 minutes away from her sixth Ivy League championship title. The rest of the conference combined has five. Also, that incredible that the players are tied with 30 goals for a record. It's pretty incredible what this Princeton team is about to put together. Unbelievable is just a coming together of a lot of things for this group over the last two years, two years plus. Worth potentially the wait here. well first quarter third quarter they got out scored the first goal of the frame scored a bunch in that third quarter very early until the Tigers found their footing again they're really struggling on the draw today um, they just had a third uh, play, Yale player take the draw different player and a deer off um, it's got to be disconcerting you know to, to 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 be able to rely on that uh, all season long and then and then in a really important game to not be able to quite get your footing And a bit of what we saw on Friday, Sky Carasquilla was 
dominant early as Yale jumped out to a huge lead. Marge Donovan's got another ground ball and a cost turnover, probably two. You know, Montez will bring it back the other way. What do we have? A whistle, it'll go against the Yale Tigers, have to slow down a little bit. Tigers have had the slight edge in ground balls. And it's an area where they've been excellent. Marge Donovan, two more cause turnovers today. She's moved into the top 10 on that list for the Tigers. Stat was started to be tracked and archived in 1998. She's one back of Liz Bannantyne of ninth. That one off the stick of Montez. It'll go back to Yale. Clock will continue to run along here until Yale can make it a single digit game if they do. You know, Yale's got a lot of energy coming out of here. I mean, a couple of things haven't fallen their way, uh, but they've got the, the sprite in them that we saw a week ago. Kane Mullum nearly knocked that one loose. And you can feel the energy start to pick up a little bit. I mean, either way, no matter if there's a crazy score shift or not here, this is it. This is, this is the last few minutes of the Ivy League season. So everybody's going to try and ramp it up a little bit more here. Mary Megan Wright just doing what she does, coming in so hard. Sammy Phillippe giving some body there. And caught in a tough spot on a really nice pass there. It is going to be a free position shot. Clock continues to move. Sophie Straka will take it. First year player, 12 goals. Marge Donovan nearby. Sam Fish, who's had a tremendous game. Eight of 15 today for her. And Fish will get another one. Yeah, I mean, Fish is just, you know, proving to be a really hard wall for Yale to try to get around. I'd say, you know, she had 17 saves last weekend, but she's done such a great job today making any hope that Yale has really dwindle. So more and more as we go along here, we'll see forms of clock management by the Tigers. Way, way on the edge here. Montez, Chicago native, easy to skip around. Let's it go and a save made there by Denadio. Denadio has shown rather decently. She stopped seven of, of 16 so far. Yeah, she's done a, a great job. Also a first year. So, you know, just getting experience in this game for her is huge. Uh, and, and I would say she's 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 understood the assignment. <laughs> well said. As this one is pushed in the middle. Tigers really trying to collapse and clamp. But the clear there. Here's Everson. She's been the best player for Yale today. 31 in Navy. Well, I'd say, you know, from Denadio to Vaughn to Mary Megan Wright to Everson, that's a, that's a first year four connections all the way down the field. Kalignan's been decent as well as this one is shut down. Fish makes another save. Pair of goals for Kalignan today. Kalignan's got that long frame right in the crease, bodied a bit. Whistle against Princeton. Yeah, they're going to call that against Sammy Phillippe. She's, she's doing a great job trying to hold Kalignan out. Kalignan is just such a force around that bottom area. She uses her body so well. And here she gets on this hash again. This is not a, my favorite hash, not even kind of, but Kalignan loves this hash. I would anticipate she's going to take this in hard. And a goal. And Kalignan trying to do whatever she can. She's got three today. And that will start to stop the clock now as it is a single-digit game, and that gives Yale a chance to breathe and, and try and preserve here. Yeah, you can see just, just how powerfully Kalignan comes in on that. Uh, you know, and, and Sam, she's Sam Fish, she's done such a great job at saving, but man, she uh, she gets one pass through there. Let's step aside for a break. We'll come back with the final 10.06 of regulation. Tigers leading by a score of 17 to 8.
Well, it's quite the shot down on the field. We got a, a bulldog dressed in a what looks to be a Princeton or an orange headband here. So <laughs> worlds colliding, if you will, as we're down to the final 10 minutes and change here at Sheriff Field, class of 1952 stadium alongside Natalie Calvad and Krista Samaras. I'm Jeff O'Connor, 10.06 to go. Yale has gotten it down to nine. It's been as big as 12 for Princeton. And that allows the clock to stop when there are whistles, but still quite the task up ahead here for the Bulldogs. And the Tigers have the all-important possession, and that was crucial. They can start to have a plan in mind here for the final nine-plus minutes. Mary Murphy up the field, one of the seniors who decided to withdraw in 2021. Senior now in 2022. Part of a tremendous back line for the Tigers that has been together for so long. We've seen that throughout the last decade or so. Where Chris Seller finds a group of defenders she likes. One of them's on the Yale sideline and Colleen Smith, an assistant for the Bulldogs who was an anchor for a long time on the Princeton defense in the 2010s. Takis, Cutter, save, Denadio, that's on Whiteway. Great save. I mean, great play uh, to find Sophie Whiteway cutting through the middle there, and Denadio just just gobbles that up. She's done that a few times today. Really, I think, keeping Yale as close as they are. She stopped 8 of 17. I'm not sure you could ask for much more, especially coming on uh, a bit cold, not really getting a chance to plan as the starter or know those reps were coming. Tremendous job as Samantha DeVito, down she goes, whistle against Yale. Princeton will have the ball. She's played a strong two-way game. Great two-way game. I mean, just when Yale sort of gets a little bit of a breather, uh, they Princeton steals it and you get Ty Kyla Sears putting one in the back of the net. Again, we talked earlier in the, in the first half talking about how far, for infrequently we see fast breaks. And here we see just an absolute beautiful one. The stands love it. It's Kyla again. Marge Sr. to Kyla Sr. Popping it right back in the net. Four goals for Kyla. There's an assist mixed in there somewhere as well. Four point game for her. And 7.43 to go. The 10 goal lead is back and the clock is running. Excuse me, four goals for Kyla now. My heart's so heavy for the Bulldogs because they've had such an incredible season. And, you know, to end the season, I know how it feels uh, on a loss, but also just a not the best team performance is a bummer. Um, but they've just collided on a day with Princeton where Princeton is is hitting from, from every spot. Sophie Whiteway, another draw. That's six for her. Marge Donovan has had 11. 20 to 10, 66% for the Tigers in draw controls. Clearly the top key to the game. I mean, Princeton managed to win last weekend when they got bested by Ed Sun um, to be able to have those draw controls this, this weekend. Um, and today against Yale has just made it, they've had the advantage completely. That's what the draw control does. Tie up, whistle goes against Yale. Last weekend, it was 25 to nine for Yale. Kyla Sears nearly head first into the fence there, but she doesn't know any other way. It doesn't matter if it's a 10 goal game with six minutes left, that's leaving it on the field. Well, you see her just working and using all that effort to try to get the ball in the back of the net. Um, but there she's just trying to chase down a, a ball that's going out of bounds for her team who's up by 10 goals. I mean, it's just, if that's not a testament to leadership, work ethic, and, uh, you know, being a, a Prince and Tiger through and through, I don't know what is. The draws were 25 to nine Yale last weekend. They are 20 to 10 Princeton today, a total flip of the script. Yeah, Chris Taylor talking at halftime about just how much they worked this week on be able to get that advantage. And when that work pays off in a yeah. game like this, you know, it's the trust in the players for the coaches strategy. It's a trust in the coaches that the players want to execute um, really, hugely 
uh, a big win. Everson's been good. She was an inch off from scoring there. That drew the pipe. I think Everson has just carried the, this goal scoring weight today as best she could. Um, we just didn't see as many connections from, from Yale, as many playmaking options. Penoyer sort of taken out of her game a little bit. Margaret scored early, but couldn't quite get that, that ball control. A lot of it in part due to, to Princeton's just amount of possession time. We are under five minutes to go. Few possessions left in this one. Clock will continue to run with the 10 goal plus edge. Ari Bonanno right down Broadway. She will score. Yeah, that was building up in the in that in that footwork as she was heading in. Um, Yale is pressuring really far out. So when the pressuring really far out, you really want to look for a drive from the top, and she takes it so hard. She gets that clear lane to Cage and then places it in. Princeton just so offensively minded today. They have the opportunity to take so many different kinds of shots. They've leveraged all of their assets. Um, and that the asset they probably wanted so badly, uh, but probably didn't expect they'd have in this. Marge Donovan just taking care of this draw circle action. Clock rolls along. Maybe two, maybe three more possessions left in this one. Donovan getting after it. Whistle against Yale. The Tigers will take it back. Hustle play there from Fallon Vaughn, uh, but not going to get the benefit yeah, of the call. Yeah, that's a bummer of a call. That was excellent effort by Fallon Vaughn. Here's a run. Pancini will drive right in. She's going to get what looks to be a free position shot. In many ways, I mean, I love to see Pancini down here on the offensive end. You know, she's done such a beautiful job um, in the last couple of games, especially just just doing her job as a, as a defender to see her up here getting action. And a shot off. Dededio getting the save. It's great. Whoa! Kyla Sears is not done playing in this game today. And neither is Mackenzie Blake. Kenzie Blake missed just wide. And with that draw off that whistle there, Marge Donovan, the single game record for draw controls, 12 of them. We saw her had an unbelievable game out in California where she had double digit draw controls and doing it today. It's just, there are no limits to what this program can produce year in, year, year out from a individual level, from a team level. And that's shown on again today. Great defensive play on a deer off got it ahead good head fake there by Everson trying to catch up to it Everson has such a great eye for the ball she could see that that ball was going to go past both of them um, and decide to play it on the backside really heads up play I mean as a as a freshman as a first year player um, she again is sort of just managing the pressure of being a goal scorer being the the offensive leader out there Penoyer doing, Penoyer. I wish she had done this earlier, but there she is exactly as brilliantly as we've seen her in the past, just taking such an incredible drive from this left-handed side. Besting Maria Pansini and Tish. She gets that ball in almost at a no angle. Just her second shot of the game. The Tigers have just not allowed a lot of shot attempts on goal, partly because of the draws. And even still, they've had some holds along the way. Caused turnovers, seven of them. Unbelievable. We're under a minute to go. I'm glad she got one in today. Um, just feeling like she's moving. It's going to be a long year to get back to preseason training, to get back to fall ball. 
Um, and it's it's games like these where maybe you didn't get to put it together, you didn't get to, to show all your stuff uh, that give you the motivation when you're preparing for next year. Tigers clear it. An unbelievable few years. They won the Ivy League title in 2019. Their season was canceled on March 11, 2020. 2021 was canceled. November 2021, Chris Saylor announced her retirement. Their first game in two years, they beat Virginia, the number 10 team in the country. They went undefeated in Ivy League play. They win both games of the Ivy League tournament, and they are off to oh, the 2022 the NCAA tournament, the 2022 Princeton University Tigers Ivy League tournament champions. What a game for the Tigers. Putting it together from end to end. Um, the unlikely dominators of the draw. They've played so many tight games of late. Up at Harvard, Yale last weekend. They had a postponement. The schedule kind of condensed on them more than usual in an April run. All the obstacles in their way. A lot of new faces and inexperience on attack. A reliable defense, a reliable goaltender and all the while playing for their head coach who through generations has been loved, adored, has built <laughs> long-time relationships, unbelievable networks stretching across the globe. And to cap it off in what is likely the last game on this field for this year, to go 7-0 and in Ivy play and to really absolutely lock it down on both games for the head coach Chris Saylor and her 2022 bunch an unbelievable, a remarkable feat. I mean, it's it's an, it's incredible to, to watch in any year a, a team work really hard uh, to win this championship, uh, but to know that this is how Chris Saylor is going to go out is really special. For this team, for the seniors, it's a double senior class. Uh, they've got 10 seniors who are originally going to graduate in 2000 and 21 hold back and then they of course the 2022 seniors as well with a great freshman class sophomores juniors the mix that COVID has provided uh to see chris sailor and the tigers clinch this so convincingly um is is a is a big deal hats off to yale for making it here for their first time absolutely so yale again you know, mentioned the last since Erica Bamford took over, Ivy League wins, two wins, then one, then two wins, then one. In the COVID season, they were one and one. Last year, canceled. Talk about a lot of mixed variables for them as well. They were picked to finish seventh in the preseason Ivy League poll. They were undoubtedly really neck and neck with Prince for the best team. Tigers got them at the end of the regular season, but they were absolutely deserving of getting here. So credit to Erica Bamford's club. Tough to fall short in the final, but so many new experiences. We, we heard Olivia Mark. Uh, a year that will certainly be remembered the first time in the Ivy League tournament. Totally. I mean, listen, you know, experience compounds and all of this experience at first years. We will not have to say that storyline next year unless they have another 17 kids who are coming in um, as first years for Yale next year, but the first years become sophomores and that humongous sophomore class uh, is hungrier and readier in a year from now for sure. This Yale team is gonna be competitive in the Ivy League for a long time coming. And I would anticipate, I would even predict that they're gonna be big on the national scene. I think we got uh, ready to check in with some of the the seniors and of course the head coach of the Prince of Tigers and I saw a nice group interview about to get going here as the Tigers celebrate and the party will go on today and looks like we're ready to throw it down there. So if we are, let's throw it down to Natalie Calibet who's down a field level. Coach Saylor, Marge Donovan and Kyla Sears all joining me today. Ladies, you got it done. What are the emotions right now? Very happy. <laughs> Very excited. A little yeah. tired, but excited. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it was just such a great game. I'm so happy for my team and this 10-person senior class we've had. We worked so hard for this, and 
uh, you know, it was a tight game last weekend. We knew we could play better, and we came out here, and, and we did just that. Coach, Ivy League championship title, your sixth, and an NCAA tournament bid here now as your final coaching uh, career comes to a close. What does that mean to you? Uh, I mean, it's just an awesome way to go out and with these guys, love these guys. So we're excited we get to play some more games. That's what it's all about. Some records from you two withdrawal controls and breaking the school record for goals scored. What does it mean to you both? Um, I think the uh, score on the board is a result of the draw controls from this girl today. So I would say that's like the biggest stat we could have gotten and we knew we wanted to execute on it and we did. So that's her, Sophie White and a bunch of people on the circle. And like what Kyla said, it's just such a team effort. I'm so proud, especially of our younger kids. Like they stepped up today. Sophie had an incredible, incredible day on the draw. Kari, Sam DeVito, and like of course Kyla, you know, you gotta put them away. And you know, <laughs> Kyla on the offense definitely does that. So. Kyla on the national anthem too, right ladies? She nailed it. She, she nails it every game, she really does. Well guys, solid, solid game from the Princeton Tigers today. Tremendous job, thanks Natalie. Thank you to Chris, Kyla and Marge and a tremendous picture right there of a lot of foundational monuments here. We're gonna see if the trophy's gonna get rolled here. Hey listen, you gotta, everybody's gotta stretch it out, right? It's, uh, Chris, the stretching doesn't change. You got to do it after the game. Uh, no matter <laughs> what, there's a celebration. Win. You got to got to work it out a little bit. So yeah, one would say you should probably stretch a little bit more after yeah. this. Um, and it could be stretching from the game or stretching headed into uh, post-game activities. These, uh, this amazing team, these Tigers, uh, a lot to celebrate today. I mean, you know, I think there's probably a great tailgate going to be happening. Parents are here. The fans are here to celebrate. Um, lots of hugs to give around. I love what Kyla said, you know, not even thinking about the record she's, she's made today, but talking about Marge and her effort on the circle, probably the biggest differentiator uh, in this game for sure, breaking her own record today. 299 points for her. That's what she finishes on here at... Princeton and we shall see what is next the Tigers they've they have played a, a ton of oh, there's the we'll see the uh the celebration uh, down on the field everybody dancing they were dancing last week too Chris was uh putting her moves out there it was uh, a lot of fun <laughs> <laughs> singing it's like they prepared this I love to see the joy because you think about, you know, during COVID when all of these players were sidelined for so long, it's just a beautiful thing to be able to see uh, all this work. Division one lacrosse, division two lacrosse, division three lacrosse. Here we're looking at the Tigers, Ivy League champions. They saved their best for last. Unbelievably complete performance. All the small areas they wanted to get better at. All the spots they normally dominate at, they dominated at. And just an incredible, I mean, you yes, you have Marge, and yes, you have Fish, and yes, you have Kyla, uh, but what you're getting is remarkable performances from so many key role players now. You can almost see the future. They're still in this season. There's going to be postseason play for sure for the Tigers. The season is not over yet. But it is an incredible way to play your last game as a senior here, as Chris Saylor here after 36 years at Princeton, um, to have that last home game here. It's unlikely that they'll get a bid to play back in the stadium or in Princeton for postseason play, but uh, to end it this way, it's not as beautiful as it was last weekend weather-wise, but um, one might argue it's it's even more meaningful. It was better. It was better than it was Friday. At least there was clear. <laughs> the skies were not dark. There was enough sun here and there and enough temperature to enjoy it. So it looks like we're going to have the have some all-tournament selections here. Let's kind of listen in a little bit along with everybody else. Also from Cornell, Karina Schulz. From Harvard, Chloe Provenzano. Also from Harvard, Grace Taylor. From Yale, Olivia Marker. Olivia Penoyer and Taylor Everson. From Princeton, 
Kyla Sears, Marge Donovan, Sam Fish, Grace Takas, Mary Pansini. Is Marge Donovan. Marge Donovan, tremendous honor for her on a team that's full of so many goal scorers. To see a defensive player, and, you know, last weekend it was great to have Rachel DeCecco, Rachel Becker DeCecco on the broadcast, that, that defensive player, that Tuaraton Award winner that across both genders, only player to ever win the Tuaraton as a defender. Marge Donovan, certainly that type of caliber player and difference maker. We've got the NCAA we got the trophy down on the field for the Ivy League tournament. Let's pop it on again here to the PNX. <laughs> Olivia Pugh, Marge Donovan, Kyla Sears, right to left. Celebration about to really get going now. It was a little subdued because the victory was by a big margin, but there's the trophy that matters, and the celebration is on here at Class of 1952 Stadium. The banner in there as well. Team picture. And it couldn't have gone any more perfect this 2022 season with all the great schools they played, some teams they defeated that were in the top 10 in the nation. And Chris, this is what every coach and program hopes for. You, you, you can't worry about the rest of the nation. We're gonna, we're gonna play them, but we're gonna get to our conference games. We're gonna win our conference, and then we will try and go as far as we can come the NCAA tournament. And the Tigers have checked just about every big goal they have. Now there's one more goal and that's to make a big run as long a run as they can now well we're in unscripted territory now yeah. right so you you've had this all these games on your calendar for the year you're hoping to get to this final one and, and win it and there's a selection show that'll basically unveil how the next week or two is going to play out for the tigers so today is a big massive celebration for everyone probably tomorrow a day off and then it is back to work because they're likely playing somebody they might not have played before so the scouting begins the preparation begins the work begins the focus begins again the 30th ncaa tournament appearance for the prince university tigers in their program history chris Saylor has most of those 30 ncaa appearances what a season what a game in the ivy league championship for my partners, Natalie Calabat and Krista Samaras, I'm Jeff O'Connor saying so long from Sherrod Field, Class of 1952 Stadium. The final score in the Ivy League Championship Final, Princeton 19, Yale 9. The Tigers are off to the NCAA Tournament. All games are airing on the ESPN Networks are streaming live and archived on the ESPN app. This has been a presentation of ESPN.